Happy Monday, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coach Show here on KOXE. I am Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach, Athletic Director Sammy Burnett. Happy New Year to you, sir. How did you spend, or how did you ring in the New Year? Happy New Year, Stuck. I rang in the New Year by watching football games and then mm -hmm. bought the last hour, I guess, with my wife and daughter, uh, staying up till uh, 12 o'clock to ring in the New Year, but we made it. I asked my daughter how it was to spend New Year's with her grandparents, so mm -hmm. uh, she actually was fighting it too. So we made it. We had our little, my daughter had some kind of Welch's strawberry sparkle water or something, <laughs> so we rang in the New Year. We had a good time, and then we went to bed. Good we were deal. so excited to get our first day of uh, 23 under a belt on a 80-degree day and nice outside, so it was wonderful. If the rest of the year's weather is like yesterday's, it'd be uh, good year. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, so what did you think of those college playoff games Saturday? I thought they were great games. I mean, for the first time they had uh, two playoff games that were within a touchdown's mm -hmm. uh, margin of victory. Uh, I thought the TCU Horned Frogs shocked the nation, to be quite honest, and whoever else is watching, uh, you know, across the – not just our nation. A lot of people watch those games, but, man, I thought they – I mean, they, they honestly surprised me. I'm a, I'm a Michigan fan. Uh, that's probably my second favorite team. I like Jim Harbaugh and what he does and the, and the toughness that he brings to Michigan. Uh, if it's not a Texas team playing, I'm usually rooting for Michigan. And I honestly thought that win, I was rooting for TCU because they're a Texas school, and, and uh, that's just sort of how I do it. Those Texas schools, I don't care who they are. I don't really have any allegiance to any of them. I root for them all, and whoever's ranked the highest is the team that won't be successful. Because I want a you know a Texas team in the championship uh, series and boy TCU put on a show. I mean they they showed them that they could play physical and play tough and to stop that running game and sort of get Michigan out of their element. I thought they'd be two tight ends and smash mouth football and a good example of the respect they gave TCU was on that fourth down and first of the game they had to run a trick play instead of just putting some big boys in the backfield and and what we call that sniffer or whatever, a double sniffer, and just, you know, run for the, the touchdown that way. But TCU stopped, and I thought it was a great game. And you look at that that Georgia-Ohio State game, man, George, Ohio State was throwing the ball at will. And, you know, Harris, Marvin Harrison Jr. got hurt. And I know that hurt him a little bit, but, man, they're gifted with receivers. They threw the ball all over the place and, and really exposed the defense of, of Georgia. But, man, Georgia showed that resilience and that, winner's mentality and never stop fighting and what well, came back from 14 points on the last mm -hmm. quarter never been done before and uh, in the championship series and and wound up winning that game and I felt for the kicker for Ohio State you know but yeah. it's hard to put him out there and expect him to kick a 50 yard field goal when I think his best was 48 or 49 mm -hmm. and expect him to kick a kick a ball to win it and they even said in their post game press conference it came down to one play but it wasn't that play yeah. there was a lot of one plays during that game that that Ohio State had that they could have been successful. So I thought they were real classy in the way that they supported their kicker. And, uh, Mo, that's a lonely position when you're when you're not making field goals. And, and uh, you know, Georgia missing field goals early. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so there's a lot of different ways that game could have been won or lost. You can take a game. I've said it before, uh, four or five plays in any football game will determine the outcome of that game. And there was a lot of them in that game that could have done that. So, But, man, it was exciting to watch. And I'm excited for Monday and to watch – you know, TCU match up against Georgia, you don't know. Yeah. So what's your early prediction on that, Coach? Man, it's hard. You know, I'm, I guess I'm like everybody else. I'm rooting for TCU, of course. Uh, Georgia's a strong, solid football team. Uh, trying to be one of four teams in history to go back-to-back -back in national championships, and that's hard to do. And I mean, you can't count TCU out. They, they're fighters. And, you know, them, they have some receivers that can make big plays. And from what I saw uh, – Ohio State, due to the secondary of uh, Georgia, you know, they're going to study film and, and sort of mock some of the stuff they did, I'm sure. So I expect Duggan to have a, a good night in the passing game. And I think, you know, if they get old 33 back, I'd have to ask Leighton. She knows the whole roster for TCU. <laughs> I'd have to ask her who, what his name is. But if he gets back healthy and is able to play, uh, you know, they got two good running backs. So you can't count TCU up. But to make a long story short, or short story long, I'm, I'm rooting for TCU. And I'm, I'll go out on a limb and say TCU's going to win. I just think it's destiny for them. You heard it here first. That's right. You know who's going to win that. You don't even have to watch next week. So you if you're going to bet, you, you, if you want to bet right, probably go against me because I'm usually wrong. But I, I, I'm rooting for TCU, and I think 
you know, I think they got luck on their side, and I think they got confidence, especially after beating a good Michigan team. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, before we watched football Saturday, you and I and a whole lot of people saw a whole lot of basketball yes, last we weekend, Texas Bank Holiday Classic. So your thoughts on the tournament? I, You know, I thought it was a great tournament. Uh, didn't, I, I found myself sitting watching a lot of other basketball games that our kids wanted not participating in just because it was good basketball. I mean, on the boys' side, I mean, I sat there and watched Wall, who's a really good basketball mm -hmm. team, had some really good-looking kids. Uh, and you watch Abilene Wiley, who was solid and played really well, and Gatesville played extremely well. I thought our boys played well. And on the girls' side, I mean, they had a whole handful of girls, big school, you know, small school to bigger school kids. They they were sort of balanced and, and played well. You know, you saw them all the way from down south to up north. They were coming from everywhere, and I know a lot of them stayed in hotels in, in, in Brownwood, and that helped. You know, business, all in all, you know, if you look, Howard Payne, thank you for allowing us to use Coliseum. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, we faced some adversity with some water issues at the high school and had to move some games to the junior high. Uh, no one complained or griped about that. They just did what they had to do. Uh, the maintenance department got that leak fixed and were able to move it back to the high school, so thanks to them. You know, uh, a, lot of spon a lot of people, uh, sponsors that, that helped make the tournament possible, you know, uh, of course led by Texas Bank and then, uh, so many businesses in the hospitality room. Every time I walk in, there was a different business from Mexican food to to barbecue to, to to chicken fried steak to baked potatoes to sandwiches to cookies to you know just providing food for all the workers and and all the officials and all the coaches. So that's a big deal. It's a crazy you know I tell you all the time you feed a coach he got his heart and uh, to have good hospitality rooms at two different places in the community. Uh, businesses providing food for that was big, uh, and I, I know a lot of time in both rooms. Did you? And I actually <laughs> spent, I actually ate twice, and there it was my eating time, so mm -hmm. I did eat twice. So uh, it was really good. So I appreciate them. You know, uh, the Sparks, Miss Sparks, uh, uh, Haley Smith, uh, Hortz, the Hortz family, and all those people that worked the the the, uh, the hospitality rooms to make sure that the coaches and the officials and everybody involved. The workers had uh, what they needed. I mean, it took a lot of people uh, to make it run well, and it was run extremely well. You know, Roland Soto did a phenomenal job keeping the website updated on who won. And, of course, you're constantly putting articles in and keeping people caught up on brownwoodnews.com on how the game results turned out. So uh, I thought it was amazing. I thought, uh, uh, you know, Coach Hortz and, and Coach Parker and the way they orchestrated that tournament and the way they put it together was phenomenal. So uh, other than play, you know, uh, which we, we all get to see the behind the scenes stuff if it wasn't for that and all the people that volunteered their time and effort and, and money and, and resources to make that thing uh, work uh, just as another typical example of how Brownwood uh, supports our kids uh, so thanks to everybody involved man it was awesome and then we got to watch awesome basketball you know our girls I thought played well you know at times if you look at some of their games you know we lost the game early to uh, to Lake Country, but, you know, it's it's shots from the perimeter. We're actually making those, but then we're missing uh, rebounds and, and balls in the paint. Uh, when they were successful, they were in their element making shots from the perimeter, uh, you know, getting hot from the three-point line, and, and then the games that weren't successful sort of goes back to the same, you know, the, the layups or the missed shots in the paint are not making shots from the perimeter. So, uh, you know, they're getting an opportunity to, to get ready for – for district, which starts for them, I think, at the end of the week with Glen Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got one more uh, game on Tuesday. Uh, they'll uh, The girls will uh, host Marble Falls and on Tuesday, starting at 4.30, and then uh, they'll start participating in their district. So hopefully uh, those games help them be successful. So uh, all in all, you know, on the boys' side, I thought it's a lot of good things. Uh, I think, you know, some turnovers in, in the games that they weren't successful in, just some unforced turnovers and, and – Lack of ball handling or, you know, turnovers that way cost them a little bit. But when they play hard, uh, they played some good opponents. So, all in all, I thought it was a good tournament for everybody involved, you know, not just us, but everybody involved. You know, I uh, got to see Brownwood in early play, and that was great for both communities. There was a lot of people in the Coliseum. It was a great basketball game. I tipped my hat to both teams. Uh, it was back and forth, and it was a good basketball yeah. game. It was fun to watch, and, you know, uh, some of that inner city or whatever you want to call it, you know, inner county stuff. Uh, creates a good atmosphere, whether you're playing early or Dublin or Bangs or how you match up or 
whether it's Brownwood playing them or Bangs playing early or Dublin playing Bangs or Bangs, you know, Dublin playing early. Anytime you got that any county, inner county uh, action, it's it's great for competition for the kids and it's great for you know the 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 fans involved. So all in all, I thought it was a phenomenal tournament. I enjoyed every bit of it. All right. So uh, of course. District basketball is almost here, but starting tomorrow, soccer regular season here is here for the Lions and the Lady Lions. Yeah, I'll go through this. Let's go through the schedule for the week. There's a lot of action, of course, but uh, on the soccer side, boys uh, will host Burnett here at Gorman Stadium at 7:30 tomorrow night. Our girls will uh, travel to Waco, La Vega, and they'll play at 4:30 and 6. On the basketball side, our girls will host Marble Falls at 4:30. Start tip off starting in the gym. Our boys will be at Coleman, and they'll tip off at 5. And then our soccer teams, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, will go to tournaments. Our boys will be at the Georgetown tournament. Our girls will be at the Alvarado tournament. And, of course, on Friday, at the end of the week, our girls will tip off uh, their district uh, run, uh, hosting Glen Rose. Those games will be at 4.30, 4.30, and 5.45. And then our boys will travel to Gatesville, which is going to be a big test for them. Gatesville has a very good basketball team. Got to see them play several times. They're very strong. So, uh, iron sharpens iron. It's a great opportunity for them to go as they have a couple more opportunities to get ready for, for district. But they'll tip off at 5 o'clock at Gatesville. So uh, got a full slate of basketball and soccer this week. Yeah, we had both soccer coaches in here the last couple of weeks. They're both excited about what the season holds. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, the boys had an alumni game. Uh, I guess that was when 28th. Thursday. Yeah, on the yeah. 28th. And, uh Talk to Coach Westman. We're covering basketball, so it's more of, it's a glorified practice, but it's neat for uh, alumni to come back and play. And uh, I tip my hat to alumni. They were victorious over our team. Uh, and I talked to some of the soccer guys, and they were pretty impressed with the alumni and what they had brought back. And they were fired up about playing them, and the alumni were fired up to prove that they could still play. So all in all, it turned out to be a good deal for them in a, in a glorified practice, but it's neat to have those alumni games. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess – Start of the new year, we've also got what powerlifting coming up, golf right around the corner, tracks not too far I mean, away. It's all coming around. You know, middle of the week we got tennis mm-hmm. uh, starting again. We have golf picking up. Uh, track starts tomorrow uh, for the for uh, when school kicks off again for our our kids and uh, off season's going well and and uh, you know right around the corner is baseball and softball. So we got let's see powerlifting, basketball, soccer. Tennis, golf, all kicking off. And the next thing you know, towards the end of the month, we'll have baseball and softball, and we'll be in full force for spring sports. Never a dull time in the spring. Never. I actually took some time in the, in the uh, break to uh, fill out my January schedule, and I, every t- every team has a certain color highlight. Mm-hmm. So my uh, January calendar, and it'll be that way all the way through June, hopefully, uh, is just tattooed with a lot of different colors to try to keep me on track of who's playing where and when and da 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 so that's yeah. that uh january schedule is full yeah the busy time of the year is here that's right all right well anything else you want to mention today coach? did we hit everything i believe so all right let's thank those that make this show possible then auto glass magic burner auto group syntax body and paint Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Edward Jones Investments, Hendrick Medical, Howard Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Heartland Funeral Home, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie's Tees. All right. Bam! Look, what, what she is threw this? in NASCAR. That oh. starts in February. 48 days from now. You said she put that car up with the number 48 on there? That looks bold. That's like seven weeks. To the Coliseum Drive? No. To the Daytona. Daytona. Ooh, Daytona. You should know that, Mr. Nascar I should, guy. but I, I know it's in February, 18th or something like that, isn't it? I think it's 18th. That's a whole week worth of racing right there. They do it all week long. I'll take your word for it. It's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be back here Wednesday on the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show here on KOXE, KOXE.com, the KOXE app, and the KOXE Facebook page. Have a great day, Brownwood.